Can you see me? You see the wall in full screen? Outside in full screen. In high resolution? In color. I welcome all of you on the wonderful live stream of Robo Exotica 2021. Last year, we had the wonderful idea we want to deliver cocktail robots and therefore also cocktails to uh, the suffering population of greater Vienna. And we thought it would be a one and only thing. But again, we are in our shitty little monochrome office at the museum's quarter. We have a guy with scissors in his uh, helmet. Thür Björnsson, our <laughs> beloved and dear intern. Eric McEver is our artist in residence at Monochrome. I he, am indeed. Yeah, he just arrived like two days ago, still in jet lag, perfect for drinking. Here is our streaming server. Uh, and Frankie is of course in charge of Hi. all of that. And he's also in charge of planning the route uh, right. to bring the cocktails to the people. And here is uh, the lovely Jasmin Hagendorfer. She is the person that you actually call when you call the phone number to order a drink. She made a really comfy, nice little spot for her in a not so comfy hacker space. That's Esel, our next door neighbor. He is running Esel AT. Here <laughs> we have Thomas, and here we have Thomas. Christian Heller from Berlin. Uh, he was our um, artist in residence last year. <sighs> I hate this phone, Samsung. <laughs> Our lovely little driver just waiting for us to go. And the drinking games, like if the moderator says something, you have to bring the audience for three days. <laughs> we all did PCR tests yesterday. What about fucking you? Um, I see cars. I see lights. This is exciting television, folks. Robo Exotica is the festival for cocktail robotics. So we present machines and robots and strange contraptions that mix or serve alcohol and we usually have like three to four thousand guests but that's a little bit of a problem in times of lockdown so we decided we want to have a cocktail robot delivery service and i guess we have the first guests already arriving i'm a researcher working with sexuality and technology in a very broad sense how pleasure you dismissed as something which is frivolous and superficial and shallow. And when we are very alienated, pleasure can be very life affirming. Mm -hmm. um, it actually, you know, collapses a lot of the things that we think about in terms of economy, because yeah. pleasure is very abundant. And most societies are very strict on and try to limit the form of ecstasy that people mm -hmm. can enjoy. Uh, how much alcohol you can consume, what kinds of drug you can consume. Ecstasy is by definition ego dissolving. You like ecstasis, you have to stand outside of yourself. Like I can't make you behave if you're all the time ecstatic. There's always this control of ecstasy because it is a control of society. It's harder to sell shit to people if, if they are very happy. We have our first customers. Thomas Pindle, you built this machine. Please explain what it does. Yes. And it was built for the lockdown, so it's very sturdy. It's built for the apocalypse. Yeah. So you can really... So it makes Moscow use and it gives you epilepsy. That, that's what it does, yeah. And Yasmin yes. built this uh, abomination, the great Yatsubaga, which is short for uh, the great Joannes. Um... Let's go to the child abuse. <laughs> Dear Thomas uh, Kranabetta, this is what is child abuse. This is also a post apocalyptic robot. Either squeeze the eye and it shits Bailey's, or you twist the head and it serves gin tonic or vodka lemon. I'll take the child abuse. Kata, welcome. <laughs> Hello. How do we use technology for pleasure, but also how do we use that uh, not from like a normative way of expecting that sexual interactions uh, go like, and especially for a lot of uh, disabilities uh, and for a lot of disabled people. Uh, look at oh, the God. sex robots, they're so boring. They look like something from the 19th century. It's just like a piston that moves. There is a lack of imagination because everything vibrates. Really advanced 
and fantastic sex toys already exist kinky mm. people are have been doing it with whatever they could and and they've created all of this in their garages and homes and using things like you know uh, your uh, old electronic toothbrush i have to do uh, a little brief interview with this fellow here he is an old robo exotica veteran and you may have uh, seen me already uh, when i was uh, frying your sausage But usually at robo exotica we also have so called bar foods we have things that you can eat uh, in german we call it unterlage it's like a miniature electric chair i nicknamed it old sparky and i put some frankfurt sausages in there what calamity are you enjoying it yes It's and perfect. what machine did 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 do it did make it the baby we have to push uh, the eye until it's uh, getting bloody and then the vodka <laughs> drops out of the bloody eye the idea of intimacy with machine uh, is something that i think we are already sort of doing in many ways disabled people are mm-hmm. really the cyborgs of our time most of the right. time because they're dependent or we are dependent to better say uh, on artificial stuff inside and on our bodies right like i wouldn't survive without this plastic in my belly yeah they're very, very happy very happy customers here A big hello from from austria to uh, new york oh, hi johannes uh... well, i'm one of the the curators of a 27 year old film festival called Kukaloris. Uh, it takes place in the, in the town uh, where David Lynch shot Blue Velvet. I love the uh, the Killbots from uh, 1986's Chopping Mall. I wish they made robots like that today. There's a request from the chat to show the a close up of the baby abuse happening. Johannes, what have you done? I have not done this. That guy did it. Hi. So, we are on our way to the Bye, second Vienna. district in Vienna. I am a big fan of the uh, PKD adaptation from the 90s, Screamers, which uh, oh. uh like some robot monsters. The killer robots in the in the film are pretty much like living chainsaws. How about uh Saturn 3 from 1980 does have a, a really creepy uh like cringy creepy rapey if you will robot i think i saw it the first time when i was like 12 or something like that it came on like a late night austrian television that was a, a major source of masturbation for me i have to say i mean i i remember the scene where where farah foss said is like in this full pretty much like 1970s porn outfit and and snorting like ecstasy with uh kirk douglas yeah mm. cinema mm. think about it like it's a it's a it's a It's it's memorable. What do you think the future of robot films is now that we're living in a world where artificial intelligence is no longer a theoretical thing? But uh, it's all just going to look like the same shit. Yeah, well, so so it seems like the challenge for filmmakers becomes to Marvel movie in five years, and there won't be any other kinds of cinema. Dead art. We are on our way to the tenth district, and Gunter has to break. Oh shit! <laughs> We do a lot of stuff with uh, Tesla coils. Uh, we've engineered them in such a way that they play music. So we tour around doing rock shows for kids, teaching science and play Slayer for elementary school kids with lightning. Giovanni, did I see some of your handiwork at a party at Fantastic Fest many years ago at like a like a like a ghost town or something way out in the way out oh in the- yeah 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 oh god that's uh that's, Maybe. that's a throwback with elijah wood we put uh elijah in the cage he danced to raining blood by slayer it was great uh and then he proceeded to get pretty intoxicated i didn't But, really recognize any uh person in that video well hang on i got another one i got another one he's putting on a faraday suit which is essentially the same concept as the cage so i've essentially agreed to this Oh my god. Hey, how are you? The connection is so bad. We are so bad. Ah, shit. Is it bad? I hate it. I hate it. Uh, Ophorus uh, is an artist 
dealing a lot with uh, with the theme of cyborgs and transhumanism in his uh, paintings, and you are uh, uh, researching artificial intelligence. You tell a computer what to do, and suddenly it creates weird, weird artworks and weird shits that you haven't been <laughs> uh, expecting. And that's, but that's... how does the robot or the artificial intelligence know when it's beautiful? The um, AI learns <laughs> from art history and kind of captures what might be perceived as beautiful and thereby creating beauty, even though it doesn't know that it has no grasp of the concept. But does it create kitsch? Absolutely. We actually have a robot that comes on tour with us, built on a couple of wheelchair motors. His arms move around. He's got a couple of sol solenoids to hit the drums. Yeah, he could like move his uh, beaters up. He doesn't really have hands. He has beaters. And he yeah. can move them up and just like poke your eyes out real fast at like 30 hertz. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. I mean. Like I could easily strap on, you know, like a deadly taser on his arm and make it a, you know. We designed this uh, mobile backpack based Tesla coil gun. Whoa! <laughs> we are now on our way in to the twenty third district. Is it yes? We we have a new guest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, here I am. Hi. You are such an old uh, Robo Exotica veteran. You never really built an actual robot, but no, you built never. Really interesting contraptions to torture people, like uh, having to suck uh, drinks out of their eyes. It was this headset that uh, you could drink from your headsets. Yeah. I've never seen so many people humiliate themselves. Like it was goggles. Uh, yeah, and yeah. The goggles, the goggles were the glasses full of alcohol. So you had to tilt your head back so you wouldn't spill the alcohol. And you had to drink from your, from your eyes, from the glasses in front of your eyes. So you couldn't see anything. You couldn't really bend your hands because you had this like strange tubes on your hands. And the only thing you had were fly swatters in your hands. We had also people almost uh, drowning because they, it's very, very difficult to drink uh, in that position. Yeah. Uh, but then no one died. So we are kind of happy or I'm an artist actually. So I don't do useful stuff. I never did, I would say. So that's a kind of uh, a game. Yeah, that's it. It has only one bat on this one. This is a magic trick with this Corona tri uh, stick. Uh, <laughs> Self-test all the way in the nose. Oh, are you going to put it all the way in? Yeah. Oh no! Oh. So I'm building this uh, little sculpture here. They will build it uh, exactly uh, where the skiers are uh, skiing down. It's, it's like a skier who fall down and fell into the... One, one leg is not leg, it's a hand that is going out of the... It's, it's this kind of playing around, having fun, uh, making jokes, teasing little bits. You know, this is things that uh, was always making me very proud. And... Uh, and this kind of grown-up world, as you say, it's it's boring. Yeah. Anna, Anna could could be a better ally in the fight against the grown-up world. As an adult, you're still, you know, you're still going to have the same playful impulses you had as a kid. And if you try to suppress them, it's not going to do anyone any good. So, you know, I think that's, yeah. I mean, it, well, that's that's basically what I built my career on. Um, Basically, I was a little boy who loved dinosaurs, and I've kind of built a career out of still loving dinosaurs. Uh, dinosaurs led to Godzilla, led to moving to Japan and making movies. Um, and I don't know, I mean, it's, I've built a pretty good life out of it. So I think, yeah, I mean, hats off to not growing up, you know, to, to kind of being Peter Pan. Nice, hey. Thank you. Hello to Orlando, Florida. Hello. That's and that's Easel who is taking pictures. He's like our photographer, yeah. And he's super drunk. No, and I'm testing the cocktails. He's sure testing the cocktails. You're testing the cocktails. Are you are you testing like every cocktail with every person you go by? I'm testing cocktails. 
Yeah, he like <laughs> <"Peace> <laughs> test. <laughs> Which one is the best? Well, these the Nook is the best bar in Orlando, and um, forty minutes they're gonna have opera in the back parking lot. Wait, I'll, I'll walk you out here so you can see what's going on. Don't go too far because of the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Hold on. Oh. You are an artist, you are a curator. So it's the and, best bar. You know, they yeah, have opera is. in the parking lot. We showed highlights from uh, the Vienna Porn Festival here. Yeah, that was fun. also true. People didn't know what to expect, actually. Some were quite affronted, I think. But it doesn't matter, I always say. So on New Year's Eve, this girl, like hung out in front or in the bathroom door. So everybody going to the bathroom had to pass through her. And she had it blocked, like she spread. Is that right? <laughs> she wanted somebody to watch her pee. She was literally hanging out in the uh, door frame, trying to pull every single person into the bathroom. And it, it was pretty enjoyable. We're waiting for the customers who ordered the drinks, but they are not showing up. But 20 oh. other people saw the car and just no, came. Like run, random people from the street, like 20 of them just came because they want to see the robots. So I was always identified as some kind of a hacker. Long time ago was uh, uh, speaking for one of the largest hacking organizations. And I'm frustrated by, by the state of the open internet at the moment. Um, there are a few things that are left. Um, so Wikipedia is one example. Yeah. 10, 15 years ago, um, there was more free and open stuff. I don't know if we can really get back to days where, um, yeah, this is different. Um, I, I think that that is lost. That Web 3.0 is uh, something that you hear a lot nowadays, something that works on, on blockchain technology yeah. and gives people an incentive to, to make it decentralized uh, through some kind of uh, crypto uh, currency incentives. Uh, so the old free and open internet was all about information wants to be free and uh, Web 3.0, as they call it now, uh, is... Um, Gifts want to be expensive. Um, well, it, it sounds like it's not information wants to be free. It's that information wants to have value. And this is a way to, you know, I mean, it, it, it sounds like it's attaching value to it in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the word value is a very big word. There are some uh, Marxist theorists uh, mm -hmm. that, that built a whole uh, world around the word. We have done all our deliveries for today. And we are heading home to the base. It was very um, obvious with the 2016 uh, Trump campaign that without all the online uh, networking, everything, um, it wouldn't have been possible. Like, uh, and, and the old right is, is a movement that largely lives online, uh, stuff like that. So uh, all the things that I thought would uh, bring people together um, it brought people together, just the yeah, wrong people. people together. <laughs> they are all drunk, by the way, in the car. Another topic I heard you guys talking about, um, sort of going off that, um, conservatives imitating um, sort of liberatory culture, like yeah. the conservative Wikipedia. Um, I was just thinking the other day uh, <laughs> about SantaCon. SantaCon was where hundreds of people um, would dress up as Santa Claus and then get super drunk and mob cities. It started as a cacophony society uh, event. So fun, liberatory, we're messing with the system, man. It went from sort of disruptive, you know, Discordian <laughs> to frat party. And I participated in it once. And um, the revelation I had was that uh, the Santa identity was um, incredibly intoxicating. And not having that selfhood, you, you're subsumed into the Santa selfhood, um, was a release. It sort of started to dawn on me, <laughs> is it the, this is actually the model for fascism. <laughs> you're just going with what this identity feels really strongly, and that's yeah. great. You're just like drunk and rioting down the street, but it's okay, man, because you're Santa. So people just open the doors for you. They're at least afraid enough of your collective identity. They're like, yeah, okay, man, just, just don't break anything. Just like a couple of years ago, irony was a major tool of the left. Or am I mistaken? And it was always a reactionary force. <laughs> that's the horrifying question. 
is whether any of the um, sort of the micropolitical resistance of situationism was ever liberatory. It it seems like it was. It felt really good. Where's the internet? Well, we, we have invaders here. Internet. Where's the internet? Uh, there is the internet. Here's the internet. Ah, oh, the internet is alive. Okay. <laughs> you, oh, well, okay. Unless <laughs> minus total Trump. For the last 20 years, I've been talking about uh, yeah. the internet as a paranoid machine and kind of ha-ha, jokey fun, hypertext is paranoid. Yeah. And then it was. No, they are fucking wrong. Yeah, they are. Oh, <laughs> I was like, what is it called in English? <laughs> totally interrupted. Vannevar Bush. Uh, was a nuclear scientist and the whole he came up with just like riffing around like writing an article for a popular magazine it was like meme x where everything is just linked to everything else this knowledge being generated specifically by nuclear war <laughs> needed to be filed and the solution he came up with was like well anything can be linked which is now that's the exact um the same tool used by conspiracy theory. That was the inspiration um, for the people like Ted Nelson and um, uh, uh, Tim Berners-Lee to create something that did that, where you could link anything to anything else. Ah, ah, ah. What if the entire idea of memory technology and especially networked information is inherently paranoid? Like there's just no way around it. That It's a structure, like it's haunted. Connecting disparate ideas together and creating something new, like, you know, that's the essence of creativity. That's the, the essence of the arts. The year that Vannevar Bush wrote that article where he described the mimics and the basis of hypertext, um, I believe that was the first year Salvador Dali was showing in America. But one of his major um, artistic practices was the paranoid critical method, where you just take two things, man, you just put them the fuck together. So you have a lobster, you have a phone. Lobster phone, boom, mind blown, art made. The idea that putting information next to each other, making it more accessible, has always felt like, well, that just, that makes everything better, right? Like, that's cool. It wanted to be free, now it's free. Maybe the problem is wedding that to the idea that it's liberatory, that information wanting to be free is also freeing, um, when in fact, it's a very neutral process. Creativity can be bad. <laughs> Jason and I have decided that like, there is no hope. There's yeah. no hope, but there's fear. <laughs> Uh, not anymore because I drank all of it. What? I'm feeling violated, folks. Sensations. And now we are shit. Fucking gimbal. They're, the fucking gimbals. I hate it. The whole fucking thing doesn't work anymore. <laughs> the last 15 minutes, nothing was working. Fucking technology! Uh, there, there is some feedback going on. on. The whole ring is blocked at the moment. So yes, because of the fucking anti-vaxxers. Yes, yeah. uh, we will have, we have a big van. We can just like plow through them, I guess. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean. It was so popular yesterday that, you know, after all the demand, it's just, it's on a recovery retreat. Um, we'll try to assemble some essential parts such as arms and legs. Um, I, I uh, also help run a film festival uh, here in Indianapolis. 10 day in-person film festival, uh, about 150 films between shorts and features. Anything to do with robots? They are blocking off uh, nearly the entire interior section of Vienna. Fucking anti-vaxxers! What is this? Is oh my god. Is it cocktail time? It's cocktail time. I guess there's people around who want to imbibe somewhere. In the meantime, the team here is already imbibing. I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, how many beers in are we? Here we are. Beautiful Vienna street. And no customers. I am... Uh... Here we Trying are. Trying to find out what's going on. The suspense is almost unbearable. I think I need a drink for this. Some uh, Christmas cookies for the way. Oh, really? At least some of you guys can't drink. Oh, that is nice. I I, I, I hope it's not it's not like the, the specific cookies, you know? Like, it's just no. like, no, no. It's just, it's just yeah, yeah. yeah. He is not drinking any alcohol. Yeah, How can we, can we help him? If you don't know ginger beer, you might think there's alcohol in it, but ginger beer is without alcohol. That's just a historic thing because it was 
brewed in a way so there was alcohol generated. But today you can do it with chemistry, you can do it about that. So ginger oh. beer, terrible. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. It smells like ginger. It's good. So cheers. Yes. Absolutely, yes, yes, oh, yes. Cheers. Oh, wow, we have the next guests. The next customers, it's like going bam, bam, bam. They yeah. have some like taxidermed animal or something. Like, what the fuck is this? Like a giant rat. It's a groundhog. Oh. Look at the, it is. Sweden had a huge problem with alcoholism uh, about like a hundred years ago. Yeah, the whole infrastructure of Sweden was about to fall apart. Speaking about alcohol alcoholism and all that stuff. <laughs> yes. Uh, this <laughs> We want happy customers. That's yeah. gin tonic for eight euros. I mean, that is like, that is like for happy customers. Sorry I'm late, which is very un-Austrian of me, but uh, <laughs> I didn't have a link to the Zoom, so. I, uh, but worries. when I sent you the link to the Zoom, I did send it to you. My relationship to robots is probably just uh, science fiction gaming. Like I'm, I've been a game writer for like 20 years. So the most recent game that I worked on uh, as an as somebody's employee was called Starfinder, and that's like Dungeons and Dragons in space. So, so how scientifically do you construct your fictional robots? Not at all. So when it, when you're talking about games, it's more about how interesting it is to people and how fun it is to interact with them than it is about science. Unless you're writing something that is supposed to be for somebody who's a science nerd, like. Which, you know, I'm probably not qualified. <laughs> but there's a whole spectrum of uh, science fiction that could inspire a fantasy robot. From Data on Star Trek to, I don't know, Terminator. I mean, you know. And a lot of those robots aren't scientific either. Like, in, in the past, a lot of times the robots were kind of clunky and uh, bulky and, you know... Uh, slow and over time they become sleek and smaller and faster and i mean when you're talking about smaller i mean even microscopic right so uh or clouds of microscopic robots that work together i mean there's even a, a game that has it's a post-apocalyptic world and the people who live in the world have forgotten that these clouds of nano beings exist and, and because they can command these nano beings uh, they think that they're using magic, but what's really happening is that these clouds of robots are carrying out their wishes. I even have written a thing where uh, people use technology to go inside a star. I mean, it's like, um, but, and there are people, there are, there are civilizations inside the star. I mean, that's just wacky stuff. That's just absurd, really, but it's fun. If you were here last time, I probably talked about Pepper's ghost illusions and how to make, you know, um, videos inside of glass objects. And that's what I've been doing for like the whole year besides teaching is just messing with video um, synthesizers. And I'm probably mentally ill now. A Pepper's ghost illusion is a, it's an, it's an old uh, stage magic. Uh, trick reflecting uh, something out of view into a transparent uh, piece of glass or plastic at an angle and this goes in here like this right and at a 45 degree angle so if I had a video or something playing down here underneath it would appear like reflected at you, but you'd still see my face behind. I've been collecting lots of televisions. The one that just arrived yesterday is a Teledyne Packard Bell. It's sweet. Anyway, I have like, I don't know, 15 or 20 televisions now. It's just an excuse to, uh, to buy more old TVs, you know. <laughs> I'm a junkie you now, and I just didn't want to stop. And so I haven't, and I don't think I'm gonna. And in fact, it costs a lot of money. These synthesizers aren't cheap, and these TVs aren't cheap either. But uh, for some reason, you know, I just, I, I'm just, give me more, give me more. It feels good. Every day I see on Facebook that you bought a new TV set or something. You know, like it's just like yeah. crazy, man, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'd, like I've been telling, I've been telling them I'm not, I'm not mentally well, but. Uh, I think the TV has actually helped me like kind of hold it together. I put them inside of lamps. I put them inside of um, 
Erlenmeyer flasks. Here's a small one. It's like, That's oh, it's insane. A, it's like, a, like a giant, like like glass testicle or something. Yeah. What what is the dollar value of this Erlenmeyer flask? Jesus. I got this one. Yeah, this <laughs> this is this is a look, man. I'm not saying <laughs> when it, it makes any sense at all, but it's also I, antique. It's vintage. It came with this this beautiful stopper with some some valves and whatever on it. This is such uh, bourgeois decadence to uh, revel in these. <laughs> I feel like this is a perfect spot for Somebody's got to do it. If I didn't buy it, it would just end up in somebody's like display cabinet. It would Most be real- people would just like put plants in it or something. <laughs> what what, uh, what are your friends are saying it? about you getting totally lost in this world? I don't know. I don't, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but it's not surprising to most of my friends. That- the problem is when you're starting collecting math crystals or something like that yes right exactly and you know like i mean that, that, be, that could be part of my personality profile that i'm just avoiding by you know we have our own here we have our own seat i was in in uh, high school i never drank and i heard my friends in the hallway saying they're gonna try and get me drunk in high school at senior week and i said hey guys I, just because you just said that, I'm never drinking for the rest of my life. And so that, far, I'm 39, and I have stuck with it just out of spite. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, uh, uh, there is, like, the, the, the crazy guy is back again. Uh, it's our friend uh, um, uh, Leo Sauermann, who is part of the local burner community, the Cyber Christ. Look how shiny you look. Look, dance for us. Dance for us. They are doing the Austrian butt hug. It's uh, it 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 makes me horny. Oh, and he is projecting a sign. It's like it's like the Batman sign. What is it? It looks like a vagina. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, that's the Burning Man sign. That's the Burning Man. Sign. I, that's the Not Burning Man sign. Why does it look like a vagina? Where does the liquor dispense from? It is it, from underneath. It's from it's from the anus, I think. It looks like like some like an like an reverse enema kind yeah. of thing. <laughs> it's a baby with a collapsed colon. Uh, I recently yes. did a film contest. I can show you. It's a fake commercial I made that is very stupid. The sound isn't coming through. Usually, you have to press uh, the share audio <laughs> checkbox. Can you hear the sound of the sharing. video? That's a good you can giveaway. read the sound of the video. Right. Um, nothing. No. <laughs> nothing. Can you improvise the sound of? The I video? could. So, so essentially, this was for the Sick and Wrong Film Festival, um, uh, which is located in Florida. Um, but I ended up actually winning one of the top prizes. But the trophies are a fake silicone, uh, like beef sandwiches that have the eyes and faces of a Furby doll. You found it, right? Yes, that's slightly disturbing. We also have two friends of yours, right? We did a, a, essentially a trolling feature film over wh- when everybody was kind of locked down during the pandemic called The Transformations of the Transformations of the Doctors Jenkins. We basically posted uh, uh, to our friends and we said, uh, would anybody like to participate and make a uh, take two pages of a script that we will send you? And then we'll put the whole thing together to make a feature film. They thought we had taken a feature film script and broken it into two minute segments, two page segments, but rather we had sent everybody the same two page segment. So the script makes no sense at all. On purpose. On purpose. It's really, really hard to understand. There's two characters named Dr. Jenkins that talk to each other without breaks. So you don't know who's saying whatever. It's the people that got the two pages were only allowed to communicate with the artificial intelligence during the process. <laughs> so they couldn't talk to us or anyone else. They could only email the artificial intelligence. I was talking to a bunch of people I don't know as a robot through email i was talking to them as a robot who was slowly breaking and not understanding what they were saying like they would be like what aspect ratio do you need or what's the continuity between the scenes dear michael cake we will be can do it and if you must add a credit then email problem to me for yums today is a clone of tomorrow and my dad is not tommy triple x dar j gerferned layer planets i am now release and legs don't exist please send info as information documents 
Thank you, Firth Nerf, for being large soup. Yeah, let's say hi to, hi to everyone. Uh, Katja, Ryan, and Paul. Ryan, good friend of us uh, from Durango, Colorado. Uh, like an old Rob Exotica veteran. So Benny the Booze Organ was the first. That was 2010. And that was the 300 pounds of steel and debacle of trying to get it all over there. And then I was over again in 2003. 13. So that was the um, bot that uh, was operated remotely from um, a wireless uh, suit that I made that I would make people hold hands and use a high speed uh, switching circuit. 2014, I did the frame. That was a 48 hour build and beginning to end, had no idea what I was going to make when I got there. And I had 52 hours, including whatever sleeping time I could allocate. 2018, we came back with that group of friends. We actually built that one mostly here. But then we had that long debacle of uh, the guy coming over the electronics, getting arrested and impounded. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. You're not a super specialist about cocktails, but no, uh, I mean, not. you're definitely a super specialist about N wine. Being a professional alcoholic, I would say. <laughs> um, but people also say that I'm a sommelier or that's actually what I learned. Most of it is just like the psychological part of it. What is the dream that I can sell to you? For what do they need the alcohol? Do you need it like for aperitivo, for, for dinner, for do you want to impress someone? Sadly, quite often you have the conversation like the customer wants to know how much you are knowing. And then it's like, it's like kind of a game. In German, it's like this önologische Schwanzvergleich. We just tried for the last 20 minutes to find the garden of the god of alcohol. Oh, Jesus Christ, I can't even get out of the car. It's so, it's, I don't, I have no idea where we are. I hope I don't step in dog shit. It's so, fuck. I don't go first. You, no, I don't. Okay, Günther goes first. I'm, I'm way too afraid of the god of alcohol to go first. There's some projection on the wall. On the road. It's your stream. He's projecting me. The stream. <gasps> it's not only the god of alcohol. There is another god or goddess. You have to pray. Get on your knees. Get on your knees in, 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 the, in the garage. Like, is all, I, I don't know if the if the snowman makes it like more or less sinister, but Stur. Transformed. I'm utterly transformed. Uh, Very. Yes. Yes. That is the. That, that was that was the blessing of all blessings. That was the blessing. These are our sacrifices to the gods of alcohol. I hope they. I hope they see and appreciate. I think uh, growing up in the U.S. too, we always had a kind of foundationally fundamentally different experience it's a culture so different for uh youth and alcohol and things like that that actually leads more to like teen binge drinking and stuff so it was like hanging out outside the liquor stores waiting for someone who looked like relatively 22 came along that might buy us liquor and then yeah you know just uh driving out and on the county roads sitting in the back of a car and drinking out there because there weren't safe or like accepted places to go and do that. And that carries up till at 21. So I think it's always been interesting for me in the time I've spent in Austria, which really has been a second home. It's, it's an interesting part of the cultural differences that I think of like the openness to engagement. And, um, you know, I've seen kids walk into bars there like 13 and get a drink. <laughs> But, it, but at the same time, you don't have, you don't have the teen binge drinking problems, which is an epidemic here. And I think that's part of like kids learning around adults with their families in the context of like, you know, learning about drinking culture and that here's the things you need to watch out for. Here's how you keep yourself strained. You know, we don't do this with it. You have to drink in moderation. You got to be careful. On your knees, on your knees. No one taught us that you shouldn't drink, you shouldn't mix like champagne and vodka, you know, or, or whatever other horrible combination ends up leading 
That's oh, a solid man. bullet. Like that's a great drink. Oh. <laughs> that's not, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that's not such a bad combination. What kind of champagne to be well, honest? Yeah. The drinking culture in the United States and college is like we're gonna get fucked up. We're actually pretty busy delivering drinks. We're like uh, it's just like de deliver, 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 deliver. Like all is in the in the stream all the way from uh, Cape Town. Oh, we're running a, a festival that is. Uh, concerned with robots and technology and science fiction called Cellodroid. Metropolis, um, that's just, that still remains such a fantastic movie. And even to the extent that we, we did a live soundtrack for it at, the, at one of the Cellodroid festivals with our um, Macabre Ensemble project, we create new soundtracks to classic silent films like we've done Nosferatu, Hexen. We're going back to Museum's Quarter. Are we like, are we done with delivery? No, no. What's going on? I am at my own um, dinner party here. Yeah. Nice. Yay. Yay. Look, yay. We have a penis for you. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you. Always appreciate a big penis. Yasmin is doing the Porn Film Festival in Vienna. And uh, that's why I know you, because you're doing the Porn Film Festival yeah. in Athens, in Greece. Uh, and I actually hand you over to Yasmin because she is the expert uh, in, okay. in Porn Film. In porn. I am so OP. Oh. I really I need I need to urinate badly. Okay. So okay. we can't this. watch. <laughs> okay. I, I, I can I can if you want to our patron saint, our patron god of the festival is Dionysus, who is the god mm -hmm. of wine and orgies. And that's why yeah. the other name of the festival is Satyrs and Menads, who are the priests of Dionysus. And uh, they would have these festivals where they would get drunk and have sex. What's Gibson? What's commune? Just ordered my drink. How difficult is it, or how? What are what are, what are your experiences in setting up such a festival in in Greece? Uh, by, to by begin way, with, I, I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing the pee Ooh. now. In case you want to check that out. I always, Hi. always. Ooh, Enjoy I'm getting a drink. Thank Ooh, you. Yeah, nice. Say hello to the audience. The audience. Thank you for radical expressing yourself and you as well. I hope you enjoy your drinks. Yes. We can also come back to the topic of robots and sex. Robot I love think, one. Uh, you know, the new ones are good. I've seen the new ones that I've seen I've... seem like so lifelike. And it would be fun to keep one around the house. The sex robots, you know? Yeah. There was this case of uh, people who bought uh, cages for their dicks. And uh, the, the password was an electronic password to open it. So a master could control their slave from a distance. And a hacker mm -hmm. locked all the slaves' mm -hmm. cocks and asked for money to release their cocks. <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was funny and I thought maybe the slaves though enjoyed that. Cyber brothels are, make, uh, are opening up so there's really a lot of stuff going on with like body modifications and everything. I think this is like really just we just really are at, at the low end of, of what is possible actually. Police if you're watching that come come get us. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Look at that. Where, where are you Roly? I'm in deep Styria, deep, deep Eastern, Eastern Styria. Look, this here, here oh, we have Jesus, you know, you see Jesus, oh my God, Jesus. and Mary uh, and the Kachelhofen. Oh my God. Yeah. And like this, you know, this grape lamps. Roly is a dear old friend, a uh, long-term member, the media gland of Monochrome. You have been to so many Robo Exoticas. Um, well, the one time we built a machine, this like huge um, concrete mixer, a con huge concrete concrete mixer full with vodka and orange juice. And like uh, you had to lie down on a bench and then we would like slowly turn the, the concrete mixer and let it flow into your face. And like there was this one guy and we just like put everything on him, 300 liters or something. <laughs> and... <laughs> The whole floor was full of open cables and, you know. That's a pretty universal thing. Um, I think I had the I, whole, like, like the, so the sockets, the power sockets, the sockets were in the floor. Everything was, and was on the floor and we flooded it with 300 liters. 
And in the second, I thought I'm going to die now. But I didn't. <laughs> this ice pickle machine, you know, the, the ice murderer, where you were, sit you were sitting in a chair and had you put your glass like this, like this, sir. And then and, uh, you had to push a button and then an ice pickle came and... Like, it was, really, it was really got, strong. Nobody got hurt with that. Nobody. Yeah. Uh, and like the, the, the idea was you put your, your drink there with your ice cubes in it. And then this like ice pick would just like crush the ice in your glass. And it was so strong. It could, it, it could like puncture a telephone book. It would just like really like, yes, like go right through like a very thick telephone book. It was really, really powerful. It was just like just standing there in the middle of Rob Exotica and the kids were going there and pushing the button. And then I realized, fuck, this thing can actually kill someone at any moment we have to deal with this. nothing happens well, nothing oh, oh, oh. The, car, the customers the customers are here oh, 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 oh. and the customers the me is always yeah. ah yeah this is this with the food this with the ah shit I'm very sorry. Who will sorry. clean it? Who will clean I, it? I spilled everything. Who else is here? We have a dog? Where's the dog? Yeah, I don't know. Where's the dog? It wants, it wants... The fucking gimbal is not working. So. Ah. There's some dog. Florian Hofer, um, yeah. my favorite uh, uh, DOP of all times, yeah. uh, organized a little birthday surprise for David Klanl. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. He did uh, a, a porn film uh, uh, that won the Austrian uh, Porn Short Award. And who are you, actually? We're the neighbors. Neighbor, get a drink. It's good to have you. Yeah, it's a candle. Here we go. Ah, you can show the, the candle, candle up the ass. This is basically a, a soda streamer that, oh. has be, that has been remodeled really into a Johannes caricature. What does it do? It soda streams vodka. Let's do it live the first time yeah, today. Please. Yes, okay. Woo! This is also vodka. This mm, it, it's also it's vodka. all vodka. Good. For tomorrow, the lights will be working. Uh, but they would need to do some soldering for that. So it's just one out of three wires that oh, still okay, connects. So this is actually how it should be perceived from the very beginning. <laughs> do we have... Oh, okay. No, wait, there's... <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> there's too many drinks and too many computers. We need to calm him yeah. down a bit. Mm -hmm. By patting his head. How, how you many? Break, you break how his many jaw. Parts? Okay, yeah. Basically. Mm -hmm. Like that. <laughs> and voila. <laughs> and <laughs> then you have. It's lovely, really. Sparkle it's infused lovely. vodka. If you make it sparkly, uh, you get way more drunk. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it works like champagne, you know, like when you have a glass of champagne, it just goes to your head. Yep. Cheer. Yes. Skull. Uh, Cheers. Oh. <laughs> 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 Yesterday it tasted better somehow. We have the next customers and they, they brought some strange device. What is what is this? There. What is this? Uh, we started from our kids and <laughs> uh, by the way, I know you. It's the guy we almost drowned. Yeah. He's a scuba diver. Oh and almost, almost I say almost. Would you fuck a dolphin? Say again? Would you fuck a dolphin? A dolphin, yes, for sure. Of course, yeah, okay, yeah. See, I'm right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, what is the first question you ask a scuba diver? Would you fuck a dolphin? <laughs> what what yeah. is wrong with you? What is this? The dolphins so are again. Uh this is, uh, I don't know. Uh, I got this from Kickstarter <laughs> and I uh, gave it to my kids so they would learn something. I did they learn something? Uh, is no. this, are there wheels on it? Yes. So does it move on the ground or something? Or uh... Yes, it's supposed to. And that is the programming unit and that is the program. You program that robot with this thing? This is actually the program with a subroutine. 
Ah. Aha. Uh, maybe it, uh, for transporting cocktails. Oh, ah, you want to put the cocktail on top of that thing. Maybe it doesn't do anything. Just oh, some fidget toy where you can push buttons, etc. Maybe, maybe that's that's the, the 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 pure form of a machine is a machine that doesn't do anything. We are on the way to our last uh, customers. Ching Wonderful. ching! Here I have my disco kugel and and a cocktail. So <laughs> everything. It's our last guest, so I guess it's the most party, and it smells like like vomit really strongly here. I have no idea where it is. I don't want to step in it. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ! There's the vomit. <laughs> I found the vomit. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. So how is Mannheim, Jenny? It's um, yeah, it's a city full of um, I don't know. It's it's um, how is Mannheim truly? Really? It's it's charming city. It's um, um, not so beautiful, and we have um a lot of um foreigners and um, art music and industry a lot of industry so um the air is full of uh, shit <laughs> jenny joined me and uh, and eddie on the road trip that is the basis of the film trace routes jenny maybe you can tell a little bit about your upcoming show i made um a bunch of interviews um from people who to uh, told me about their um their inner shame so what are you ashamed of and um, also I did uh, an art performance about it. Yeah, probably we will um, have the exhibition in the church. It would be really nice to be naked in a church, maybe. There's this like uh, orange kind of like dildo <laughs> that is sitting somewhere in the office. And mm -hmm. that was part of that uh, cocktail robot. This one. I did it, and Jenny oh, helped. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that was another one. one. Yeah, so but it's good that you have it. so many in the office. Oh, Just take the is. one that yes, looks like it is. is from Game of Thrones. We got those uh, bad dragon dildos, and we yeah. made this cocktail robot out of it. <laughs> it was this like kind of awful looking dragon. Uh, and uh, there is this video of Harald actually like sucking it off. Oh yeah, there it is. There it is. There's still the tube because we needed to drill a hole through the sex toy because ah. there was no way of like putting alcohol through the sex toys. They casted it like this. What? Uh, maybe we had a second dildo and that went through because I'm a hundred percent sure that uh, <laughs> that the juice was squirting out from the top of the penis. It goes from here till here, but I th I thought you I thought you drilled the holes and I was very impressed by the. <laughs> You know the angles, because there's there's a lot of angles going on. I mean, honestly, skills. if it was we always about we always needed to um, push the button before someone can drink out of it. We are on our way back to the monochrome office. We'll probably be there in five minutes. We are all are very very tired, and most of us are very very drunk. Pola, 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 pola. Welcome. <laughs> now everything is okay. Now everything is okie dokie. Time uh, to bring our first guest in while we're making our way outside. It's Baram and Nina from Frankfurt. You and your nerdy show off wall. Jesus Christ. You are the chief technical officer at the B3 Biennial. This uh, film and media art festival in frankfurt so i want to have the worst cocktails in germany what goes with jägermeister Fanta. yeah uh, you're right oh, oh. mayonnaise jägermeister 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 he's drinking it it's down the pipes he made a face it's not so bad it feels like somebody spits in your drink so these are these awful clumps in there try the cement one this one is just called the bath cure. This one is called horse juice. Will uh, be clumsy and hard and sticky. You put corn in this one and okay. black beer in the other one. Ooh. And you take it in your hand like this to put this from the upper glass in the other one while drinking it. Our first stops will actually take us outside of Vienna to the lovely little city of Stockerau where I'm actually from. Uh, if you want to Google Stockerau uh, in the English Wikipedia, you'll find out there's nothing to find out about Stockerau. Uh, besides, 
uh, you see there is this giant, giant church tower. I mean, Stockerau only has like 14 or 15,000 people and this really, really, really giant phallic Catholic thing. The German Dichter Fürst Goethe, the big uh, German poet, he came through uh, Stockerau and he wrote in his diary, there's this like little cow town called Stockerau and they have a way to high church tower. And the Stockerau city government made a plaque out of it and put it on a building. So, okay. Ah, that's fun. We have kids look, okay. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> Childhood do, do, I'm, I'm not doing the introduction today. You do that. <laughs> and the kids stare in disbelief. This is usually used for um, pumping out water from a storage or something like that. If you put one end into your beer and the other one in your mouth, you get like four liters of beer in a second in your mouth. Look what we got. Uh, <laughs> our colonial overlord, of course, wants uh, some nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 nom. I can't eat and moderate. Yes, I can't eat and moderate. Nom, 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 nom. We will soon be on our way to meet uh, Harald Homolka List, who is a Monocro member. And uh, Thür, uh, we uh, already prepared a little video. It's one of the first monochrome yes. short films. Do people see see what's going on? Yes. Lovely. Then uh, I hope. Let me know if you can't hear it. So. The sound is really important. <laughs> there is no sound. We are going to come. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes. Yeah. 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 The place where we shot the thing is the, the the childhood home of Harald. So he's uh, at the moment because of pandemic make his, his home and he's, he's working there and doing stuff there and we are kind of like re at least uh, reliving the moment of going there and ringing the doorbell. Same street, same building. It has an Asia day. Ah, there it is. The thing that's a little bit different is they have a fancy new doorbell now. So I'm trying to find oh. out what's going on. Where is Harald? I cannot get Harald on the phone. Maybe he's... Harald, Harald, don't, don't uh, close the door. Oh. Don't close the door. And now we have Harald oh. as well. <laughs> he locked himself out. <laughs> du musst das du musst das Saxophon holen. Was? Wir haben gerade äh 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 ein Monokom kommt rausgespült und sie wollen ein Saxophon Solo von dir. Äh uh, das geht nicht. Wieso nicht? Ich kann das nicht mehr. Ist wurscht, du machst es. Es ist wurscht, es ist vollkommen egal. Ich sitze auf der Straße hier. Das sieht kannst du nicht. Na klar kannst du das. Ah ganz. Na gibt's Cocktail. Ah okay, ah fuck. He does want to play the saxophone. Drippy drippy drippy. Mm, baby cologne. Enough. Mm. <laughs> I can play one note out of the window if you like. Yeah. It's one good. note. I think this is more complicated than, than we thought <laughs> because he now has to call his mother to let him in. Hello, sister of Harald. This is like free improvisation, right? Which note do you like? A minor is not a note. <laughs> that was. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> You have to freak out. Come on, there is no. Nitai, you're calling us all the way from Israel. True. Uh, you're in the, currently in the doing an army service, if I'm not wrong. I, I am currently in the base. In I'm, the base. Is, uh, I wonder if this is if we could get into trouble with this like security breach uh, or something if we 
live stream this on from the base, but this is like the the the, the grass in front of everything. The part that I can show. You had like this robot building camp thing. I played like in first Lego League. It's basically a competition around the world to to host students, uh, even children, um, with creating a robot. It starts with the, a brainstorm. It's just a, basically a kit that Lego gives, which has a small computer, a few uh, basic sensors, like light sensor. Um, you need to build a robot to do specific tasks. I don't know, throw a ball, a certain, uh, a certain amount of like, uh, Nothing worked correctly. <laughs> Everything was 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 screwed, and we we didn't have enough time to test it. Everything <laughs> tends to break some some point at some point. I am not a very good drinker. I don't drink alcohol out of choice. But the thing I'm missing most in a bar is milk because I really like milk. <laughs> so, um, it's a creative idea. Would probably. Maybe including more milk in bars will be fun. But Cowbot. Uh, we want to have a cocktail robot that deconstructs the cocktail, that takes a cocktail and separates, and separates it from its it. original components. Well, the question is if. Or turns it into milk. You only need to pump air in the cocktail, so you have need uh, overpressure to get all the alcoholic stuff outside. That was a uh, game that Americans on TikTok tried out for a while. They just have this fog of alcohol afterwards, which they just inhaled. So lime juice uh, followed by a shot of Bailey's. Uh, uh, we have uh, a birthday. Uh, Do you know who has the birthday? Oh, you are the you the you, you. Oh, birthday, 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 Evelyn Frühlinger a uh, long-term member of uh, Monochrome. My son will give you a little presentation of all his Star Wars robots he built. Well, they're not robots, but... They're spaceships. Not... X-Wing, Y-Wing, TIE Striker, Quad Jumper, a tank from the Mandalorian. Oh, my. Wow. Whatever keeps them busy, right? To be honest, I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> the biggest Lego... Uh, box you can buy is the Millennium Falcon. Well, I'm oh. getting that for Christmas. Huh? You are spoiled. Oh, you know. Yes. Like, do, do you realize how jealous all of the adults are of you? Yes. <laughs> well, you should have gotten yourself a better mom and dad. The parts keep lying and flying around all over the apartment, and I'm supposed to pick <laughs> them up. I'm sparing you the little one for now because he's a bit of a brat, and he would probably just take all these things apart. The nine-year-old built it, and the little one destroys it. I just arrived uh, in uh, Unterzögersdorf, this little hamlet outside of uh, Stockerau, which for some monochrome fans is known for uh, being Soviet Unterzögersdorf. It's actually the old fire house of uh, uh, Unterzögersdorf, and we are planning to do events there and little exhibitions. Yeah. Oh, dinosaurs were a big thing when I was a kid. Are they still something that's cool? Yeah. I like cars. Don't touch that. I like better? dinosaur cars. Like airplane or kaki that they can. He likes saying uh, kaki a lot. We're not breaking things, okay? He's gonna break this, and this took me two days. Yeah, but then I need to find the pieces scattered all over the floor. What pieces? Yeah, what pieces? Uh, the about uh, uh, two hundred pieces. Wow. One yeah, that's a lot. thousand pieces. 1,000 pieces? <laughs> what about 1 million pieces? I mean, if I took every single Lego brick that I had, I'd probably have a 4,000. 4,000, yeah. 4,000, a million! If you had a million Lego bricks, what would you build? I would build a lot of spaceships and cars. And car, I... car, 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 cars! How is the blue milk? It's called a Belgian blue, I think. So it okay. has... Vodka and batita de coco, and I haven't eaten today, so this is my my first. This is breakfast. Can I show you something else, like Nerf guns? Sure. 
What? Jesus it, fucking Christ. He held my mother hostage in the in the, the toy store. And then he came home with this. And I was like, seriously, mom? I said, no weapons. Do your parents give you enough allowance? Well, sometimes I collect it from the ground. The baby steals like my dad's money and then he scatters it everywhere. Then I take it and then I add it into my wallet. Yeah, so you are not <laughs> technically stealing it. Whoa. Oh, cool. What? Let, let me say again, I was, I did not approve of him getting any weapons. There's, there's in the chat someone who says they have yes. also something to show. Very interesting. It's a book made of Lego. Wow. And if you open it, What? That's the only thing I don't have. So I'm studying with Tier in the Design Academy. You're currently in Barcelona, right? At the Low Tech Magazine? It's an online magazine which talks about low tech, forgotten technologies or obsolete technologies. The idea of, yeah, that maybe high tech is not always the best solution. The website on which the magazine is working is already is a solar website, which means when the weather is bad, it goes offline. We are now making a bike generator. So yeah, just you pedal and it makes energy. Maybe make it connected to a server. The horse just is just milk with beer. This is like rotten milk with some vinegar. Oh, this is actually awful. Ibert is a, um, it's actually both my and my old, um, we had him as a teacher. One of the things I've been working on recently are, is this little uh, solar guy. It's basically a, a flag waver that um, waves its flag every now and then. It's super energy efficient. Whoa. It's based upon communicating vessels. It's from 93. Mm -hmm. It's basically like a, a swimming, swimming fish. <laughs> it wow. moves very slowly up and down. It can speak every now and then, depending on what you uh, download into it. I built the first talking coffee maker in the world. This is Egbert. <laughs> I kind of expect that in the near future we will communicate with the world around us the way we communicate with humans. So, yeah, including artificial intelligence, because I think, yeah, artificial intelligence, it's just, it's evolution. Yeah. It's the next step in evolution and it should overtake us because we're kind of stupid, huh? Humans are kind of old fashioned. We fall apart. We're not very smart. Our brains are super slow. There's so many disadvantages being a human. They will be more alive than we are. I think there should be less humans. Huh. We're it, the problem, huh? Artificial intelligence won't be the problem. We are the problem. Around 2060, that's pretty soon, that's in 40 years, artificial intelligence might be a billion times smarter than all human brains combined. Solving something like global warming will be that easy for artificial intelligence. If a machine is taking um, a step on and thinking, okay, I will now dominate the world, they don't have to solve uh, climate change. That's a really good thing for that. <laughs> Look at that outside. Wow. Uh, lockdown, Whoa. lockdown is over. Lockdown is over. The Christmas market is over. You couldn't imagine. Omicron wow. has a field day today. Jesus Christ. You have to shortcut the eye now because something is malfunctioning with it. Yeah. It's usually the other way around. The baby pokes your eye and then you want to drink. Uh, um, I saw blue milk. Beautiful blue milk enter into the center of the screen. Is that number five? Oh, uh, yes. And for sure, we shouldn't develop any robots that that is willing to kill anything. 
we can do better than that. We should we should get rid of things like wars, aggression. If we can program things like morality, then there may be something that's very smart can actually be better than us. Mm. Uh, because I think the, the problem of aggression might also lie in evolution. There's no scarcity of food, at, at least in the Western countries. We don't need to fight to, to survive. Pretty, pretty much everything is taken care of. So why aggression is still there? The comfort we are living in now only relies because half of the population of the world is basically our slaves and producing yeah. cheap things yeah. for us. Yeah. And that's a, that's a very that's a very violent uh, conclusion you can you can draw about this world. So I mean, you can say that we are not aggressing people, but like this. But but, but could we raise violent. artificial intelligence in such a way that that it will not let half of the the, the world population die in starvation? Yeah, but I think it's just... I'd rather have something very smart govern, govern the world than someone not so smart like a human being. The artificial intelligence is just a, a more complex uh, algorithm. You put something in, there's something that comes out. Yeah, which I is don't a agree. little bit different. It's just very much a reflection of what we put in. We basically have already for a hundred years now all the technological inventions necessary to live a life of lux luxury and without any toil um but we don't do because of the way that society is organized and yeah. in a way mm. one could one could treat something like capitalism as yet another uh, artificial intelligence as a kind of algorithm that organizes our world mm -hmm. and what we see there is that it is not optimized uh, for the needs of many people um i don't think the solution then is trying to have uh, machines that uh, like have more computational capabilities. How can we basically replace this AI with another AI when we are already in the clutches of yeah. this first AI? It's really a question of politics. So it's, it's really, if, if we want to have a Star Trek future, then uh, we basically need uh, a communist revolution. And if uh, we don't have that, then capitalism will probably get us a Terminator uh, AI and everyone is kind of like freaking out here in the car because everyone because we're no robots we all need to pee we're capable of doing some really amazing discoveries but I also always take the realistic approach that at some point it's going to end up in our ass are you braced for the nft wars johannes oh jesus christ there's one or two friends of mine who are right now super into nfts but they're super in nfts because they've been around a thousand years like if if there was something that you stuck in your eye they'd have it stuck in one of their eyes in you know, the first six months. They're, the, they're those kind of people. And you gotta separate those from folks who are falling for it in the same way that they would fall for a multi-level marketing scheme. The real sad side of it on the art side is that for years and years of people trying to make open-ended art and being sharing, by its very nature, NFTs have to be a new kind of digital rights management. They have to, they have to put up the, the, the no trespassing, how dare you? So they've been attacking right-clicking as a crime, you know, the ability to right-click save. So they call people, oh, always judge any movement by what their name is for people who aren't them. You know, the Amish say, call it the English and so on. Their term is no coiners or right-clickers. Artists, traditionally, have always been like a little few generations behind in terms of access to resources, but a few generations ahead in terms of vision and message. The monochrome team can do more crazy shit with a 1975 tape recorder, a 1969 microphone, and an outfit out of a vintage store than a single web, you know, than, than, than a, a Facebook or a web service. Like the ability to move through life and cause this sort of chaos as we appear to be seeing here. There's nothing, you know, other than the pleasantry of having a simple streaming setup that you're able to stream from your cell phone. Everything else here is you bringing this chaos, this artistic, delightful chaos into the streets. This thing I'm looking at right here, 
this is from space. This is, you know, Facebook isn't going to do this. Twitter isn't going to do this. This is just artistic, delightful chaos. And I think that the hope I hold out, which I continue to hold out, is that artists and well, that's disturbing. The the the, <laughs> the artists and 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 um, uh, uh, creators and people who are trying to either bring a message to the forefront or make people think twice, also disturbing, um, are the people who are not going to be really caring about whether or not PDFs are encrypted or, you know, messages are, are you know, being approved by a central authority. They'll simply abandon what people think of as software platforms. In other words, people will use Twitter until Twitter no longer serves their purposes. And then they will utterly leave. Artists will always figure out how to aim a 16 millimeter projector on the side of a building and, and put whatever they want to. Um, my otherwise pessimistic view of humanity uh, definitely uh, entwines with an utterly optimistic view of what artists and people who break out of these structures will accomplish. Johannes, are you giving are some of your customers for cocktails to children? Oh yes, yes. There are some customers here, and they just uh, uh, they just uh, bought a cocktail. Yes, yes. She'd like to discuss that one small customer, that one, whether or not that kid's going to get their first gin and tonic. Yeah, there you go. Is this your first gin and tonic, or is it like you know? I don't know. School's hard these days. It's all remote. That's how I ended up in a bunny suit in a theater watching a woman have sex with an Atari 2600. You, you plan, and among the things you plan for is chaos, and then adapting. And then the plan in the chaos is well, stick everything in the, the stick everything in the iron box and run into the desert naked because that's what it is now. That's where we are now. Nicole is a filmmaker, but she's more into the domain of horror. Uh, the, the film I showed at Ars Electronica was called Small Talk, and it's a horror movie about a phone sex operator that I wrote after working for a very long time as a phone sex operator. I was trying to write a memoir about that work and getting very frustrated in part because I came to realize that in order to make memoir writing commercial, you really kind of need to fit it into a certain format that I was not interested in. I didn't really want to write a coming of age story about myself and my personal life. I really, I'm a kind of private person. I don't super want to make a book about that. I just wanted to talk about this one area of my life that I thought was interesting and where I learned a lot of stuff. And I started just getting these visuals in my head, these horror movie visuals that kind of expressed some of the more emotional, um, gunk you could say and I was like you know fuck it why am I even doing this autobiographical writing when I could say everything I want to say and express everything I want to express by making a horror movie instead that sounds a lot more fun and when you make a horror movie people aren't assuming it's about you in the same way because there's exploding heads and stuff so they're not like oh so which one's you and which one's this and Günther, you can go up here and then you park here. We curated the show. It's called Bill AA Plus Plus, the analog NFT store. So when you buy an NFT, you don't have to think physical at all. So we made the NFT physical. We have 50 exclusive artist editions. And uh, these black white things you see here are called QR codes. It's a modern thing. It's really crazy. It's oh, it's a crazy modern stuff. Yeah, yeah, QR codes. You, you, you can't, you can't, you wait, can't wait, click wait, the QR. Oh my god! Oh my god! And then, and oh, then you go here, and then you actually see the artwork oh, like here from uh, Daniel Poof. <laughs> here it's like uh, here it will be every time a, a, a different uh, picture. Someday, when when you have the this this whole blackout thing, you know, yeah. then the internet will go down. And then, and then you have a QR code you can't do shit with. But it's a signed PR co a QR code yes. uh, that you can hang on your wall. Yes, and it's numbered, so there's only ten of each artist available. I'm part of this, yes. so I have to sign that stuff. Exactly. Right now. So look how I put the magic onto the. It's like it's like um, now you paper. Now you yeah, create I'm, the money. Now you create the worth. Exactly. You, you're creating worth right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yes, he's on a run. He's on a run. <laughs> Four of ten. Ten. So, okay. ten. ten of ten. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Okay. And these are for for for. No, 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 no. Tell the boss. So look, look. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He's. And the other second. It's like the dish after. Yeah. yeah <laughs> crazy. So, how we proceed? Like, like, it's hard. Crazy. This is hard. I can't swallow it. I'll 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 suffocate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have, this is almost a blockchain, yeah, <laughs> where it's uh, protected and you cannot fake it anymore, you know, it's like just for it's, safe. It's, it's not safe, like yeah. a blockchain. You see it? Yeah, no. Yeah, it's safe. Nothing it, can happen. Nothing can happen. It's absolutely safe. Look, they world. have a favorite term. It's analog. We need to get them some analog cocktails. We all live in the yellow, yellow submarine. submarine. Yellow, yellow submarine. Subroutine. Yellow, yellow subroutine. subroutine. Do I answer this as if we're sitting around over drinks, or do I answer this as if I'm on a panel? Um, um, we're sitting around over drinks. <laughs> drinks. Uh, yeah, drinks, okay. drinks. Yeah. Good, good. The future that I really want to see when I think about you know the internet, the social spaces online. Uh, um, and I'm not even getting into any of the 3.0 stuff, is one in which um, human rights are first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And so how do we do that, I think, is a different question. Um, my idea... Um... Oh, Jesus, Evelyn, how many drinks did you have? I think this is number seven. <laughs> oh, fuck. My idea with regard to the privacy and human rights issue. Let's give up on this fairy tale notion of privacy that never has existed for anybody but rich people anyway. Let the big ones pay for the data they have of us and they use to make money, turn it into a UBI, a universal basic income, and then take it from there because people with a universal basic income will have so much more time, leisure, free space to think about how we can make these human rights things work again. So wow. taking it from here within so, capitalism. Whoa. Motion second like a in. Concrete plan. Yeah, that's all, that, that, yeah, all yeah. votes up down, up yeah, so that, down. Yeah, that, 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 that's pretty amazing. Um, I'm not sure everyone has the luxury to give up on privacy. And I think that it is for many of us a luxury. It's not for a lot of the people I work with. And that's where I, that's where I get worried, right? Is like that yeah. a lot of the, and, and you know, maybe that's fair. Maybe there are some places where it is time that we give up privacy, but you know, I, I'm <laughs> until people stop being, you know, surveilled by their dangerous governments that have the ability to kill them. We have no privacy in the internet. This is something, uh, an illusion. I've talked about reasons that I work on reforming Facebook and people, a lot of people in the West, and, and I hear this in Germany more than anywhere, honestly, are like, well, you know, just leave Facebook. Okay, yeah, tr tell that to somebody like who uses it in Egypt because the other options there are actually less secure and because their government's going to, you know, potentially arrest them. And I use Egypt as a real example because I have a friend in prison there for a lot of this. Uh, connecting uh, to us, uh... Our good friend, David Fine, he was our artist in residence many, many years ago. With. A lot of the stuff that I do kind of rests on people being unsure whether it's, uh, whether it's a character, whether it's staged. I decided to make a tailor uh, for Merkins, which uh, for the ravers in the crowd are little pubic hair wigs, like little artificial bits of hair that you would stick down on your pubes if you don't have any, uh, which may be because you're a Victorian era prostitute the performance was generally like an awkward European tailor who really was enthusiastic about the well-being of your pubic hair and wanted to fit you with different wigs in front of your friends. I'd give people a quick razor shave, straight edge thing, and I'd put them up on a box with a hand mirror for their friends to hold at their, uh, at their crotch level and try different merkins on them and just kind of like you know, reach between and tie it in a knot and like, how do you like this one with a terrible European accent. The performance was uh, in part for me about getting more comfortable in other people's personal space. Uh, a lot of times when I design this kind of stuff that has more of a backstory, more of a, uh, I mean, a lot of the interactive art is about conquering personal stuff that I want to improve at or learn about somehow. Um, this one with tying Merkins and people scratch all day, 1500 times over the course of a couple nights. Well, um, that was kind of pushing some some comfort zones that I had just uh, 
I used to be shy about even just standing too close to somebody or brushing against them or something accidentally. Like I had a lot of light. Uh, uh, David, we have we have the perfect uh, uh, person to match that story here. We have uh, 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 Basil, uh, who is uh, also working for the porn film festival here in Vienna. Oh, hey. Hey. And, oh, hey. Uh, have I seen you naked? Did you enjoy the drink? It's perfect. 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 Awesome. You're actually the last guys to get drinks because we don't have any more customers. We're going back to the base camp right now. So we would take photographs of people's buttholes. So pictures were taken on a Polaroid that they would get a copy of immediately with glitter and a little picture frame right around the anus. It looked very fancy. It was sparkly. Sometimes it looked like a whole galaxy of stars. And you get this party where people are just standing around comparing their buttholes. And it's the most wonderful icebreaker. Because like, where do you go from there, right? What do you have to be shy about after that? This is part of the, the, the clown school, uh, the yeah. theory of clown. Um, if you make your character and your presence the most outrageous and ridiculous thing around, then other people can feel comfortable to be a little bit more outrageous in front of you. Mm -hmm. I've done this plenty of times and I've lost friends over it. I've been the most loud, annoying, embarrassing, outspoken person in in the place, and then people don't like me. And how how do you cope? Because I'm not sure I'm coping very well. <laughs> You're coping quite well, Evelyn. Get another drink. Because I ultimately want people to like me, uh, <laughs> I design these things to leave people better off. To, so like, like, even if it's a weird, confusing, disgusting or uh, questionable experience when they're having it, they feel glad afterward that it happened. So well, what, um, if they, what if they don't and they just unfriend you on Facebook? It's it's very, it's very like, sad. They have to have some opportunity to kind of understand what's happening before it happens and a chance to back out of it really easily without uh, having to like physically push or risk embarrassment of some sort. So uh, Oh, for example, if you're... It, 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 it's getting uncomfortable in here. We delivered, we delivered the last cocktails and now they start playing Rammstein in the back of the truck. I, I also would like to welcome our, our, our last guest, Seda Röder, to the conversation. She's an expert in creativity. The idea behind Sonophilia Foundation is we want to understand how creativity works in the brain. It's quite kind of uh, new that we can use neuroscientific methods um, and apply those methods into the, um, <laughs> the creativity uh, realm. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing a baby right now. So. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Frankie built us a backstage room right in front of the monochrome office. So we have reserved for Team Robo Exotica. We have... Frankie's little whatever dog robot that he's always showing off with. So we have a couple of chairs for us already. So we have like a backstage room here. And that backstage room, that's very meta. Uh, look at that. <laughs> never ending. Uh... Never ending. This fuck. We have only 0.02% in the entire world population working in any any creativity related domain. Creativity is a fucking privilege right now in the world as we're living it. When we say creativity is an artistic thing, then we make it a privilege. Then we make it just reserved for privileged few who are able to kind of feed their artistic creativity, you know, have the comfort to do it or have the suffering, which is also another privilege of the artist. I think we can, we can, do, we can do the conversation uh, in a different time. Maybe everybody's no, no, no. just too drunk to be diving into. Oh, I'm just getting <laughs> right. started. Don't no, worry. No, we're, yeah. mm. Yeah, the, it, we're, we're, it's a celebratory mood here. Um, okay, I, it's all it, good. Yeah. yeah. So unfortunately, oh, I've been I've been given the cue to uh, to say that we're uh, we're five minutes Wrap out from up. from the evening ending. Um, well, but I, that I'm that sounds up. Oh, turn and, turn off the. I'm coming in. I don't want the feedback. Feedback time. Feedback time. So yes, yes, yes. I think I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Robo Exotica 2021. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and now, Frankie, press the button. Uh, 
we are soon done here. Thank you so much for ordering drinks. And uh, we were very happy being able to bring them to you. Thank you.